Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. In today's video, we're going to do five production techniques. That's uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yay! Okay, as ever, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button. And of course, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. And you can also try out a free trial of the Academy. Okay, so what we were doing, we had this song open because we have been trying out a new little toy down here, which you will see in a few days. Anyway, we had the song open. And I realized that there's some fun production stuff that I did in this, which I'd like to explain. Some of it's really obvious, and some of it might be really new to you. So either way, it just felt like a great thing for us to talk about. So here it is. Here's the lead vocal. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot, I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. It's got a lot of compression on it. It's really aggressive sounding. It's got some distortion on it. If you want to check out my vocal mixing techniques video, that'll be flying around here. That will give you an idea of a lot of the other stuff that's going on. But one of the things that I throw in there is a distorted tape delay. Now, I can actually do it with an Echoplex over there, or you can just do it with a plugin. Here it is on its own. It's rough, it's ready. I've even EQ'd out the low end on it here. You see here. It's just a simple, simple trick to just give your vocal energy. So I put it with the lead vocal, you got this. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot, I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. I'm cranking it there. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot. So that is a tape delay, but we can do that quite simply. Create a new auxiliary track, a mono auxiliary track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, a tape delay and I'm gonna go for real tape delay. This comes with Pro Tools. So whatever your DAW is, just go for a tape delay. There's many different ways of doing it, but I'm gonna drive it. So we're on, we're on pre-fade, so first I'm gonna distort it a bit. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. Get out of here, turn around, spit your game at the ground. Now it's got a treble and bass control, so I'm actually gonna turn both of those down, see if that helps. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna be in. Mix 100%. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. Get out of here, turn around, spit your game at the ground. I'm gonna degrade it, I'm gonna go to the slowest tape speed, so it's a little less hi-fi. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot. I'm never Now, let's get that delay to its shortest possible time. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you gonna be I'm in never you. gonna be in you. <laughs> if I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. Get out of here, turn around. Spit your game at the ground. Ain't got no sympathy for liars. I see, it's got a BPM sync here. Seems the shortest delay that I can get on this is 92. I don't hit the spot. Give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. Get out of here, turn around. Spit your game at the ground. Is without it? I don't hit the spot. With? I don't hit the spot. Give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna. It's awesome. So that distorted kind of like, the, I just went to the shortest delay it would let us have, which is 92.88. Normally about 40, 50, 60 milliseconds works great, but that worked really well. Now I just wound down the treble here, wound down the bass a little bit, but you could also, frankly, just kind of high and low pass it. You could do it before or after. I mean, if I just want to come after. So we could just do this as well. 
So all I'm doing here is just wiping the top and the bottom off. Don't hit the spot. Give you chills, make you hot. I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. Get out of That sounds great. Sounds really, really good. So that's free stock delay plugin with EQ that comes free with your DAW. Okay, number two. This is the simplest, most obvious thing. And many of you are doing this already. Big chorus comes in. Have a listen. Also, a double vocal comes in. I know this sounds really, really obvious, but listen to just how how much it helps it. Here is um, just a single vocal and then there's a pair. And I've also sung alternate lines, so there's overlap as well. It's another tip, overlap. You can see here these two vocals. I haven't, it doesn't bother me, the overlaps, listen. Backseat, lay me down. I ain't no sleaze that you found. Think you're gonna pull your socks off. Forget it, boy, won't get your rocks off. Backseat, lay me down. I ain't no So it's doubled vocal, and is, I'm not afraid to overlap it. If you listen to pop music all the time, it has those overlaps, even indie stuff. Have a listen. So it just keeps it punchy. It just like it's it goes straight into it. There's no like backseat, let me down. Ain't no see what you found. If you're gonna, it's just full throttle. I mean that's really kind of keeps the energy up. So doubling of vocals and also separation of lines and not being afraid to overlap is two really really big things. And then of course you know I put some harmonies down there as well. Backseat, lay me down. I ain't no sleaze that you found. Think you're gonna pull your socks off. Forget it, boy, it won't get your rocks off. Backseat, lay me down. I ain't no sleaze that you found. Think you're gonna pull your socks off. You know, when I wrote this song with Lily, she was probably like 18 years old, so that's why it's so PC. And uh, not, you know, probably, probably to lots of people doesn't sound particularly, you know, edgy, but, you know, she was only 18. All right, so. There's a couple of little tricks there. Obvious ones, but don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to have that vocal just pushing up against itself. So if you have to separate the lines out, it doesn't matter. Now, if it's an acoustic guitar vocal, it's gonna sound pretty silly if it goes to two different vocals that overlap. But in a pop song, da, ba, 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 da, the way it just overlaps like that, huge. Really, really helps. All right, this one's a pretty obvious one. Maybe to some of you, maybe not to some uh, others. There's a hook on the post-chorus, have a listen. Quite a silly thing. It's just da 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 da, and it's sung and is layered. Have a listen. Okay, there's verbs on it, there's all kinds of fun stuff. There's a bit of bleed in there, it doesn't matter. It's a rough and ready song. You know, this is an indie rock pop song. What is different about this? Well, I mean, I've got this. I've got synths, I've got keys, I've got all this kind of stuff. I mimicked the vocal line with the guitar, so we've got this. Seems like a straight thing, straightforward thing to do, but, you know, it's, production-wise, it's these kind of little things that I love that create sort of energy and create excitement. So don't be afraid to like take hooks and lines and if they're vocal lines, mimic them with instruments and vice versa. I know that seems like a really, really obvious thing, but you'd be surprised. Um, I don't know in the track whether you hear one over the other that much. Just have a listen. To me, it's both. I hear both the hooky guitar part with the vocal. To me, they're both working at the same time and they create one sound. So instruments and vocals, blending them together is a really, really cool thing to do. Now this next one you might argue is more of a songwriting 
tip. But hey, songwriting production. I found that one of my favorite songs is Under Pressure um, by Queen and David Bowie. And if you know that song, it's a it's hugely successful song of all, of course. The story goes is they wrote the verses in isolation. Bowie went off and wrote his verse and um, Freddie went off and wrote his verse. And when they came together, that's the reason why the first verse and the second verses are so different. I was also thinking of the Dixie Chicks song, um, was it Not Ready to Make Nice? How when it goes to the second verse, it goes to that massive string section, which really takes you out of the zone and creates something special. All of these things, when you're working in pop, we have this tendency to write a verse melody, a chorus melody, repeat that second verse melody. If there's a pre-chorus, there probably is, you repeat that pre-chorus. And after a while, it gets samey. Now, it might be hooky immediately because you love how repetitive it is, but let's face it, we get bored of the song pretty quickly. So what I did in this instance was this. So that now goes to the same pre-chorus that we had before, but that's a completely different feel. And it just, you know, you want to talk about production. You want to, to me, when I was writing this song with Lily, I was like playing the instruments, coming up with the parts, like finishing the lyrics. She was going in there and singing it. And you can see there is another verse idea in there. And let's have a play, let's play it back for a second. Never one thing at a time, there's always something left behind. So it's basically the same melodic idea as the first verse. But then we tried this instead. Poetry king, a smooth machine, talking out the side of your mouth. Ain't no thing to treat me like a queen, or nothing's going down. To me, it's like, takes you out of the zone. It's not really a rap, it's just like a kind of fast line thing, but it's that kind of stuff. To me, that is production. You know, production can be songwriting, and songwriting is production. Taking you out of the zone, looking for things to get rid of the cookie cutter kind of way of writing songs. If everything's 6415, if everything is structured so it's the same verse length, the same pre chorus, the same chorus, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to be maybe immediately exciting because it's easy to pick up the hook, but after two or three lessons, listens, you're going to get bored. This one's really straightforward. Build your song. As we just touched on about the second verse, build your song so there's additional elements coming in that make things more exciting. Now, if you can see here, there's a lot of synths that I did, a lot of keys and stuff that get bigger and bigger as the song goes along. So by the time you get to the last chorus, there's a ton of additional stuff in there. One of the things being this little lead line that comes in on the last part of the chorus. So what I've got is I've got a chorus there where the hook, the whoa, goes over the outro of the second half of the chorus, an additional line comes in, but the chorus keeps repeating itself. So what do I mean? I mean the chorus melody, keeps going throughout the whole song, then the hook's on top of it, then the other synth comes in. Now this might, again, seem really, really obvious, but so much pop music is so cookie cutter these days that these kind of subtle differences really can make a huge, huge difference. So let your song grow exponentially. To me, the first chorus comes in health of leather, comes in great. Comes in big. Second chorus comes in even bigger. The last chorus has even more on it. There's these legato strings. These.
I've got some risers in here, I've got a glockenspiel. So, I know this sounds like obvious stuff, but it's really important to sit there and think about how can you make your production more and more interesting. Um, if you haven't already, you can actually get this course and you can get all these sounds and download them and have fun with mixing it. But it's really, to me, the mix was a lot in the production. If you can tell, a lot of these synths and all of these risers and reverse stuff don't have a lot of plugins on them. Even the guitars themselves don't have much on them. Just have a couple of L1s and the reverb. None of the synths here have anything additional to them. So there's not a lot of um, extra EQ and compression needed. It really is a case of me choosing the sounds and the parts that I want and building it so it gets bigger and bigger and more exciting. As ever, please subscribe. Go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list, and you can also sign up for a free 14-day trial of the Academy as well. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and I'll see you all again very soon.